Welcome to the last video lecture of this series. In this class, I will present our research on global glacier mapping using deep learning and Earth observation data. This is a joint work carried out with Konstantin Maslow, Thomas Schellenberger, and Alfred Stein. Let me start with a brief introduction and motivation. Glaciers are essential part of ecological systems and are extremely sensitive to climate change, in particular to alterations in temperature and precipitation patterns. For this reason, they are an essential variable for studying and monitoring climate change. Moreover, glacier retreat contributes to sea level rise, affects the local hydrology, the ecosystems and their biodiversity, and often results in hazardous events such as glacial lake outburst floods, having potential disastrous effects on human lives and households. Currently, the most complete global inventory of glacier outlines is the Global Land Eyes Measurements from Space, GLIMS in short, which includes the outlines for more than 200,000 existing glaciers worldwide. However, the dataset suffers from several problems. It is sparse in time. That is, some glaciers are mapped only once. This does not allow us to monitor changes over time consistently. The outlines are manually digitized by glaciologists, a process which is prone to errors and subjective interpretations. Moreover, metadata is often incomplete or inaccurate. Therefore, our objective in this research is to produce large-scale glacier outlines using deep learning method. This is uh, one of the objectives of the project MASSIVE, an international project involving the University of Oslo, uh, the University of Twente, and the Research Center Europe. The overarching goal of, of the project is to produce large-scale inventories, including glacier maps and surface mass balance. We plan to do this by leveraging advanced deep learning methods and cloud computing infrastructure to access and process large volumes of Earth observation data. We started our research considering the Alps for our initial case study area, we built a dataset including Sentinel-1 and 2 images, integrating optical and SAR images, as well as digital elevation models. The main challenge is given by debris-covered glaciers, while mapping clean ice is relatively simple. We designed um, a convolutional network with an encoder-decoder type of structure to perform the pixel-wise classification. The network was also designed to perform an early fusion, fusion of the multi-source input geospatial data. The output of the network is a binary map distinguishing glaciers from the rest. We compared the UNET-based network against standard pixel-based classifiers using random forests. We also compared results obtained using different sets of input features, that is, only optical data, optical and DEM, digital elevation model, and finally optical plus DEM and SAR. The unit-based method significantly outperforms the pixel-based classifier, confirming the importance of learning spatial contextual features. Moreover, we observed that adding DEM and SAR data further improves the classification performance. Let's uh, have a look at some sample maps obtained with the uh, two classifiers and the three uh, different data tracks. The first column shows the Sentinel image patches, while the second column reports the reference maps, and all the other refer to the different obtained uh, maps. The classification maps uh, tend to be similarly accurate on clean ice areas, while 
Large differences are observed on glacier tongues, typically covered with vegetation or debris. In these cases, the unit-based network uh, fusing optical, SAR, and DEM shows significantly more accurate maps. This is particularly relevant for multi-temporal studies, as these areas are uh, areas where we could expect to see changes over time. We are now preparing a large multi-regional data set, including different kinds of glaciers, clean, debris, and vegetation covered. Data set covers about 88% of the glaciers worldwide. And as reference data, we use GLIMS, plus two regional inventories from the Alps and Svalbard. In terms of Earth observation data, we resort to Sentinel-2 and Landsat images for optical data and a variety of digital elevation models and SAR uh, data from MVSAT and Sentinel-1. The data is organized in near square tiles of approximately 10 by 10 kilometers, randomly split for training, validation, and testing. This figure sure shows the geographical distribution of the prepared data set. And as you can see, data are collected from almost all glacierized area, areas in the world. Recently, we proposed a hybrid CNN transformer network named Glavitu for multi-regional glacier mapping. The network is smaller in terms of number of parameters compared to alternative CNN and vision transformer networks such as Setter B16 and Ares unit, but achieved higher performance and generalization ability. The proposed model outperforms state-of-the-art methods in almost all regions of the dataset. Qualitative results demonstrate the superiority of the proposed uh, model, but also show the remaining challenges in classifying debris cover glaciers and ice melange. Okay, um, let me conclude with the summary and, and an outlook on remaining challenges and future work. The massive project aims to uh, produce large scale glacier inventories and preliminary experiments show promising results towards large-scale glacier mapping. We have curated a large data set that, co that could serve as a, as a benchmark for further developing global glacier mapping uh, models. The huge volume of data requires resorting to cloud computing infrastructure to facilitate access to open Earth observation data and efficiently train models using uh, GPUs, graphical processing units. Several challenges remain, uh, which will spur further research in the, in the coming years. Debris and vegetation covered glacier are still difficult to map accurately. Therefore, we need to further investigate advanced methods to improve accuracies in these areas. The generalization ability across different environments uh, in the world and, and glacier types is, is difficult. We are currently exploring a var variety of strategy to cope with, uh, with this problem. Uh, next to that, the quantification of calibrated uncertainty and confidence intervals is very important for better interpreting the predictions made, made by machine learning models and we are currently exploring Bayesian methods to quantify and calibrate uncertainties. I'm sure in the coming years, AI will revolutionize the way we map glaciers and other environmental features. AI may also provide useful tools for monitoring climate change and developing effective mitigation and adaptation strategy. Thank you very much for watching this video lecture. I hope you have enjoyed attending this series of, of short videos and I wish you all the best for your studies.